Economics is an interesting tool, surprisingly interesting given its reputation. Because economics is everywhere around us. Ignite exists because of an economic factor. This makes it an interesting tool to hack on the world. So tonight what I'm going to try and do is hack on movies a bit. My goal out of this talk is to leave you guys, let you guys go home with an economic trick that you can use to try and make movies better without actually having to change anyone else. Now the goal here is to increase the thing called utility. Utility is the magic term used by economists to represent value. It's kind of in specific, but it's a good way of sort of saying we don't care wh what it is, we just want to make more of it and we want to try and prevent its loss. Now in movies, utility is in the form of emotions. When you go to a movie, you're getting lust and wonder and fear and shock and romance, all these different things that come in movies. We're trying to hold that there so that when you're in the movie, you get to actually experience these things the way they were intended. Now, movies suffer from a problem called diminished marginal utility, <laughs> which means that the more of something you have, the worse it is. The second hot dog is not so bad, the hundredth is terrible. The second time you see a movie is worse than the first time, the third is worse than the second, and so on and so forth. In the entire history of cinema, there are two movies that this hasn't applied to. <laughs> In a hundred years, two movies that a substantial portion of the population would go back and see five or ten times. For the movie studios, they have a different problem. It's called information asymmetry. Now, this happens when the person selling something knows everything about it, like a used car, and the person who's buying it knows nothing about what they're getting. The natural response from the person who's buying something is to learn more information about it so you can make a decision. And if you can't get it, you don't go. When movie studios screw up and don't tell us what movies are about properly, nobody goes. They discover these great movies later and you end up with these cult classics. <laughs> the result is what's called a perverse incentive. The combination of these two factors means that the most profitable way for a movie studio to get more people to a movie to enjoy it is to ruin it for everyone. <laughs> 120 years ago, the original book of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde didn't tell you they were the same guy until the end. It was the first sci-fi action plot twist. <laughs> However, one year later, they started putting it on the stage. And in the theatrical version of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, the posters showing the twist were at the front of the theatre as you walked in. Because that would get the audiences in. There was an urgency to it. It was the first trailer. Now, the trailer is not for fanboys. The trailer is not for the core audience of a movie. The trailer is there for the maybes on the edge. They're trying to get that last bit of money off the people that really don't want to go, but maybe. What you do is you take the entire movie, carve out the best bits, compress it down to a minute and about five seconds, take all the exposition dialogue, lay it over the top, and basically show people the whole movie in a minute. And they're awesome. I mean, $300 million of special effects for a one-minute piece of cinema. In fact, they're so good that a whole bunch of you probably got a little Pavlovian adrenaline thrill out of seeing that come up. <laughs> because you only see it on trailers and you never see it at the cinema. So how do we fix this? What's the best strategy we can do? We manipulate our own ignorance. The idea is you know nothing about a movie. No trailers, no posters, no DVD covers, no reviews, no advanced screenings. Well, okay, advanced screenings maybe, but as little information as you can get about a movie. This makes the movie the first time you've seen it. Plot twists are plot twists. You know, bits of the story you didn't know were coming are awesome. It is hard. Doing this in a cinema is a little weird. In fact, I want everyone to shut your eyes and put your fingers in your ears and sing la 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 la. And this is kind of the thing you have to do to do this. And for a while, it's a little bit weird. And you get more subtle about it. You sort of just, <laughs> oh yeah, this trailer. The only problem is you might forget to go to the movie at all. Um, so the golden rule is, once you know you're going to go see a movie, the Barbie Chainsaw Massacre, no one needs to know anything about that. You'll go, some of you. You don't need to know any more. Complete ignorance. So I'm gonna end this with a list of things that I'll give you two slides so you can remember them. This is my collection of six movies, which a bunch of you probably haven't seen, at least one of them, the top one's there because it was never released in Australia, because it made $60,000 in its opening weekend. 
I encourage all of you to try and learn nothing about this, get the DVD without seeing the DVD cover, and watch this movie in a good room with a big screen, and you get to experience a little bit of what like the mainstream movies are, because you've already seen six months of trailers ahead, and what can you do? Thank you.